to buy fighting games, play it like five times, not remember a single combo, and buy more fighting games. From worst to best and conveniently in order of release, this is every Mortal Kombat cartoon part one. You know they're gonna make more eventually. It's Juice and Jam time. Over here. From that day forth, a battle where cunning and magic would overcome honor and experience and change it to treacherous, desperate, and deadly. Our first cartoon takes us to 1995 with Mortal Kombat The Journey Begins. It's called The Journey Begins because it barely goes beyond that. It basically cuts out and tells you, hey, go watch the live action movie because that's all this is. Some weird promotional VHS tape disguised as a movie. It's about the combatants on a boat setting sail to the island from Pilot Wing 64. <laughs> They're here to compete in the Mortal Kombat tournament, although this VHS tape doesn't really show much of the actual tournament. For about 40 minutes, the characters walk around while the Thunder God Raiden dispenses lore about MK history. That's all this is, a frickin' history lesson, except useless. Get over here! Actually, I take that back. Learning history is completely useless unless you're on a game show. When you learn MK history, all you get is some brownie points by some jack-off online who gets mad when you mispronounce Raiden's name and spams Ed Boon's Twitter feed with malicious requests. The Journey Begins is nothing but an exposition dump, like what's the point of essentially retelling the first act of the movie's story in animated form? Keep watching for hidden codes to Mortal Kombat 3. Oh heck yeah! Maybe this was all just a tech demo for early Adobe computer animation in the 90s. It has that cheap Sunday school cartoon look to it. Or no, I feel like I'm watching an episode of Sea Lab 2021 or Aqua Teen Hunger Force, like this could have easily have aired on Adult Swim in 2002. Gentlemen, behold! He has escaped! Among the technological advances, they got these flashback sequences utilizing motion capture suits. You think Robert Zemeckis saw this and thought, yeah, I want to live and die by this technology. What can you say about TV CG from 95? I mean, Toy Story came out the same year, so I guess this was cool to somebody. Although they did go overboard with all the slow-mo. Like this is 200 frames per second above the lethal limit. Good god, these fights look like they were filmed in beer goggles, and constantly they're recycling animation shots. Like, I swear, they repeat this shot about three times of Johnny Cage walking while trying to get his scrotum to unstick from his inner thigh. Hashtag relatable. Look, again, it's the same shot. Oh man, he's about to do it, he's doing it! Go Johnny, go! Get that ball unstuck! Now, what I find funny is that the leader of the MK tournament, Shang Tsung, is voiced by Jim Cummings. Welcome to the great tournament of Mortal Kombat. I am Shang Tsung, tournament master. Jim would also go on to play a villain called the Master of Games from Teen Titans, a character who also created their own fighting tournament and, much like Shang Tsung, can steal the abilities of other characters. Plus, his episode features that one baller-ass techno song, like WB needs to release that from their stock music library. Let the contest begin! When are they making part two of that episode with the girls? Hell, making just as Teen Titans edition or something. So among the other combatants on the island, you got my favorite background character. This guy. Look at him. That is the most Cabela hunting, Bass Pro shopping, John Deere driving, truck nut decorating man I have ever seen. It looks like a goddamn King of the Hill character. It's about time the blue collar worker gets their own combatant. Well, besides Farmer Jacks. Oh, like that makes any sense. Hey, who cares if it makes any sense? You should care, Johnny Cage. Hey, ouch, Raiden, you might kill someone doing that. 
Every shot of this video is just art. Like, look at how Raiden's neck stabilizes his head like a chicken. Is he strapped to a GoPro? And thinking back to these guys, I'm sure these are the artists inserting themselves as cameos. Maybe. No one would purposely draw characters this uncool looking. Portal Combat The Journey Begins is, I think, a tech demo for computer animation. I refuse to believe any creative vision went into this beyond that. And no, there is no blood. It's for the kids. The 80s and 90s love to make cartoons out of mature rated properties. I'd say I miss that era, but I feel like Warner Brothers still keeps that tradition up. They can make an R-rated DC movie at the same time as those heroes and villains being sold as preschool toys. And hey, what else does WB own? Don't know about you all, but I would love it if they make more kids movies or shows about Mortal Kombat again. Like a baby spin-off or some Teen Titans Go type stuff. How about a full motor combat game rated E10 and up? Or a show like DC Hero Girls about all the female characters in high school? That'd be just... great. But until then, we got more MK cartoons to cover. Hopefully ones with better animation than Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Once again you defy the sacred rules of the tournament for your own power and glory. Shut up! There can be only one! The girl in the mouth. Driven by purpose and bound by honor, these are the defenders of the realm. Alright, this time we got a 13 episode series for the kids, Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm from 1996. It's a globe trotting series where each week a portal opens up somewhere on earth and the heroes have to fly there to stop the invaders from taking over. Which hey, that sounds like a good formula. The original trilogy of games have tons and tons of iconic locations to pull from, like the living forest, the portal, or my favorite, the Deadpool's no relation. It's got that nice green liquid on the side, don't know what that is, it's probably fantastic. I'm always gonna get Fanta Lime. It's available in your local Coke Freestyle machines, available at Five Guys, Burger and Fries. What Coke Freestyle drink would you all recommend? Cause mm -mm, gotta get that Fanta Lime. Good stuff. Fuck you. So where does this cartoon take us? Well, we go to a rocky desert location in the first episode, and then another rocky desert. Okay. And, um, an another desert. Yeah, I'm not exaggerating when I say 90% of this show takes place in wastelands all over the world. Like some manic painter secluded himself in a cabin to paint over 800 variants of dirt. Grand locations such as the ancient valley of Zero Dam's Given, or the untouched virgin turned plains of Peter Pantlode. But they do phase through other dimensional realms that lead to a desert. I mean, from the games, they pulled, I think, one location, and that's it? Really? But Scorpion's spirit refused to die. On the contrary, I do love the character models. They got that Batman the Animated Series simplified blocky style. Oh, and you may have noticed the star-studded and crotch-punching superstar Johnny Cage is missing from this cartoon. Well, he's dead. <laughs> because this is a continuation of the 90s live action movies. They even made a few flashbacks to several key moments from the film. <laughs> Although, I remember there being more violence. <laughs> Having it be a continuation is odd, since the first episode has the heroes learning to trust Sub-Zero, a former villain from the movie, which, sorry if you're a kid and couldn't see a PG-13 movie or just don't want to sit through MK Annihilation again. The show has conflict, but there's little setup. Like, imagine if Zuko or Vegeta's redemption arc was the first episode of their shows. Not much buildup, is there? I assume the rest of the season would have been the MK team slowly earning trust back into Sub-Zero, but they settle that one episode in and never really question him again. Who has time for that when they just want to get into the second act as fast as they can? Watching this series feels like they cut out big chunks of it, like this next scene that I did not edit. Out 
of nowhere action, just like that. No buildup, just action. And right after that battle, it starts to rain as the team gets back to their ship to rest. So are you still thinking of leaving all this fun behind? It's because of all this fun that the news of my grandfather's death didn't reach me until after the funeral. Uh, excuse me? I need to get away from this endless fighting to sort out my life. I just don't know if I can do this anymore. Bro, it's barely a minute and 30 seconds into the episode and we're already in the second act. Chill. So many episodes are like this. Oh, and listen to its almost cringe-inducing sound design. <laughs> Why? Why would you pick such disgusting sound effects? And I never thought I'd say this, but maybe there is such a thing as too much techno music. Just constantly blaring in your ears, it'll turn any KMFDM fan into a crotchety old man asking you to turn it down. There's a lot of strange choices like this Justice League sort of team they assembled is called World Combat, which makes no sense since that's the name of the tournament. The Native American Night Wolf has an actual wolf companion he fuses with to get stronger. Sounds like my Steven Universe fan theories. And there is just way too many characters to make good use out of. Like really? Stryker, the rent-a-cop of the crew who only exists here to close portals? Like I, I can't recall him doing anything else, yet he's played by Ron Perlman. That voice is too cool for Stryker. In fact, the whole show has a pretty strong voice cast, such as Cree Summer, Luke Perry, and Clancy Brown, who's such a sarcastic tool as the Thunder God Raiden. I love him here. Why don't you just blast these invaders with lightning? Let's see. Aside from the place caving, it's a time bomb. Hello? One errant blast and we'll all be buried a lot. But now that you mention it, I could blow out of this joint an instant before it came crashing down. Just kidding, Einstein. While the first half of the season is pretty bad, the latter half is an improvement. They clearly learned a few things about pacing. There's some noteworthy episodes, like the drama between Sub-Zero refusing to fight his friend Smoke, who turned into an evil robot. I wish they gave Human Smoke more screen time to get a feel for his character, but hey, it was a solid episode. Some other decent ones involve Sonya Blade learning to stop being so impulsive when she spent the prior episodes pulling a Leroy Jenkins into combat. We need a strategic plan of attack. I got one! Maintain your current position. It's strategically wrong to take combat time. Oh my god, he just ran in. Save him. Oh, geez, stick to the plane. Oh, geez. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Stick to the pledge. Yes. Oh shit. my gosh. But I think one of the better eps was Jack's learning to fight without the help of his bionic arms that he relies so heavily on. Sure, he still has muscles, but he admits he's not all that skilled at fighting. That's a good character conflict to work from. Thanks. I've never felt so naked and alone in my life. Put your damn pants on. It's still pretty cheesy, but honestly, this series has some solid episodes. And sure, it doesn't have blood and gore, but if the PG-13 live-action movie taught us anything, is that you don't need ultra-violence to make an MK product that fans will love. These fighters can work like any comic book heroes. All people really need is some fun action and characters to follow. This franchise has more to offer than shock value. I must execute my programming. I will not fight you, Smoke. You are my friend. What misconceptions do you see about Mortal Kombat out there that drive you insane? Do you ever read comments and say like, God, I wish people understood this about the franchise? That it's just about the violence. That if you took away the violence, it, nobody would play it. It's a hard argument to say like, that people are gonna buy more and more of a game every year just to see fatalities. <laughs> Defenders of the Realm is a mixed show that I'd say is half decent, half horrendous. It doesn't help they gotta ham fist a sappy message for the kids, like revenge doesn't solve anything, spare your enemy. I guess they're right. Sub-Zero doesn't need to finish Scorpion, though they do that anti-revenge message just before they cast Scorpion down into their equivalent of the Shadow Realm. Scorpion just bought a one-way ticket to the Realm of Lost Souls.
So I guess he's not dead. He's just in this eternal void of existence. Kind of a mixed message there, but okay, no killing. Same for knives. That's too violent. But not laser knives. <laughs> Possibly the strangest thing to come from this show was their indirect crossover. Let me explain. On the Saturday morning of November 16th, 1996, happy birthday to anyone born that day, by the way, the USA Network had four cartoons on their schedule participating in a crossover. Street Fighter, The Savage Dragon, Mortal Kombat, and Wing Commander. But oh no, these shows didn't cross over with each other. Instead, each of these had an episode where some original character called the Warrior King travels through dimensions, or shows, looking for some magic orb to restore his destroyed planet. Except MK didn't really care and just had the king himself show up for like one second. And that was it. They wanted nothing to do with this cross promotion. Kind of a strange way to do a crossover, like who even is this guy? But there's other examples of this. Like Night of the Hurricane, where Family Guy, Cleveland Show, and American Dad all had episodes taking place during the same storm. There was also Cartoon Network Invaded, where they had the same type of alien appear in multiple shows from 2007. Is there a name for these types of indirect crossovers? So you're a lot uglier than I thought, but I'm still gonna kick your skin. Damn, Lizard Man got so scared he turned into a Tribe Called Quest album. So here's some fun facts. The villain, Quan Chi, the pasty white bitch of the series, his first appearance was not in any of the games, but this cartoon, where it feels like they had no idea what his personality was and hardly gave him any speaking lines. <laughs> that blows. I've been ready to blow myself. All I get from his character is that Quan Chi has this ability. Watch this, you're gonna flip. He's got a snake staff. Okay, that shoots another snake. And that snake right there, right there you're looking, can shoot even more snakes out. Oh man, eat ass, Ghost Rider. Skulls, snakes, fire. Quan Chi is so talented, he can make an Ed Hardy t-shirt. You know what to do with this. Oh sweet, a modded Xbox. I am playing Tao Feng tonight. Now, my favorite characters are Cyrax and Sector, these robots. Yes, these are robots and not just some winos they dressed up in paintball gear. Don't ruin the magic for me. These machines were once human. I believe this cartoon was their first human appearance as the later games portrayed them with their ethnicity switched. Close enough. I ain't going this way. To wrap things up, here we are at the 13th and final episode of Mortal Kombat entitled Overthrown, that for some reason was animated by Madhouse, a Japanese studio known for everything from Ninja Scroll, Perfect Blue, Paprika, Trigun. This episode looks completely different from the rest of the series, like it's pretty damn awesome how striking the shadows are. True, it can still be choppy, but with this look, it's quite surreal. If you gotta watch an episode, watch episode 13, it's something else. Nothing burns hotter than ice. Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm rounds out to be okay. <laughs> I guess its biggest problem is it's way too toy-driven. They have to market this excess of characters while speeding through the plot for more action. Basically the same issues the second movie suffered. Had they cut down the roster, separated itself from the movie, and paced the action better, maybe this could have been a great series. But on to the next MK cartoon, one focusing on a particular character. Scorpion. Mortal Kombat continues. We'll be back after these messages. We'll be back for more. Wow, cool tunage. Manscaped, back at it again. It's, yep, Manscaped. You want to shave your... 
Lawn Mower 3.0. It's not for your face, it's for anywhere below your neck. It's TSA friendly. You'd wish the TSA would cuff your clean shaven balls for carrying this around. Get 20% off plus free shipping and two free gifts with the code TAXI20 at manscaped.com. And look at this, it's got a light in case you're spelunking on the moon and want to shave. It's perfect for where the sun don't shine. I'm too afraid to look at my own reflection in the mirror, so this is perfect for me. And don't worry about cuts, it's skin safe technology. No nicks, no snags guaranteed. Plus, the 3.0 is backwards compatible, meaning you can use the 2.0's replaceable ceramic trimmer blade, and vice versa. PS4 ain't backwards compatible, but this is. Once again, get 20% off plus free shipping and two free gifts with the code TAXI20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, and so will I. Manscaped also works for female sexes too. talking about Netflix's Sace Manos in my Best of the 2010s video, I was yearning for some more martial arts cartoons again, namely a new MK adaptation. Soon after that video, we got Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge from 2020. The best year ever! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, an R-rated straight-to-video movie by Warner Brothers Animation. This is yet another retelling of the first game's fighting tournament taking place on Shang Tsung's island. Again? Which may get tiresome, but this movie focuses on the perspective of the ninja scorpion seeking vengeance with the classic I have lost everything and don't care anymore beard and haircut. Anyone who doesn't mind breadcrumbs in their beard fears nothing. <laughs> That's not blood, so it's fine for you too, okay? This movie is its own continuity with many changes. The way I see it, it's like the arcade. Depending who you play as, you get to see their ending, but only Liu Kang's ending is canon. This movie is like someone selected Scorpion, and I'm fine with that. If you want to watch an accurate story, just watch the live action movie or play MK9, which, oh man, that is seriously the cover art to that game. It looks like Grandma installed way too many toolbars on her AOL browser. But yeah, treat this cartoon like a what if scenario. Like, what if MK co creator Ed Boon cared about Scorpion and only Scorpion? Now we can see that fictional reality right before us. Isn't it just kind of fun just to like sit back and watch Scorpion fight Sub Zero? Not anymore. So, how's the movie? Well, let me be real with you. If all you demand is some wild animated blood and gore, you don't need to hear any more from this review. You don't need to play the games to enjoy this. It's pure spectacle, like damn do I hope WB makes more of these. You got many of the original fighters appearing, and even some from the PS2 era, like the vampire Nitara, who shows up in the background very frequently in a dinner scene. Hey, do you know if any of this stuff is organic? Just ask him, jeez. It's as if some designer fell in love with her as a child and really wanted to give justice to their obscure waifu. Don't worry, baby, I'll make sure more people see you again. Now, they really pulled out all the stops when it comes to art. This universe lends itself to so many otherworldly backdrops and some really sharp characters. I love how the heroic trio are in this almost Power Rangers colored attire and not just gray and black armor or military gear like the HD era games. Scorpion's Revenge has nice designs, action, and gore that I just can't show. The only issue I had visually was maybe there was too much shaky cam and only a few shots looked like the characters are sliding around. But that's it. This is one of WB's best looking animated releases and it was done overseas by Studio Murr who worked on Korra and Boondocks. <laughs> Now, if you care about story, no. Scorpion's Revenge is a basic but effective revenge setup. Yet that's half the movie, as the other half is another retelling of the island tournament. They give the most screen time to Scorpion and the Hollywood star slash comic relief Johnny Cage while everyone else is brushed to the side. Near the end, the pacing speeds through with too much going on and a plot twist that leaves you with a feeling of... 
Okay. Sure, I guess. There's a major character of the franchise who's barely here for more than a cameo, while the hero and Bruce Lee knock off of the franchise, Liu Kang hardly does anything. They end on some real sequel bait, which I think was the better choice for Liu. Give him the proper development before you do major things with him. Overall, maybe this movie should have focused solely on Scorpion, but I had fun. It's possibly more bloody than Primal or Netflix's Castlevania, but not as well structured. Still, I hope to see more from WB's take on MK. <laughs> Is that your best? I thought it was fabulous. The show was incredible. I loved it. I thought it was way much better than Power Rangers Live. Mortal Kombat Live on stage. The best family show of the season. Rise USA Today. Mm -hmm. Sea Illusions, Gymnastics, Lasers, Stunts, and more. I'm so excited. The show's great. Yeah, it's great, man. The New York Times calls it an action fantasy spectacle. Prepare yourselves for Mortal Kombat Live on stage. It's coming for one performance only, February 22nd at Rowan Oak Civic Center Coliseum. Tickets now. Ooh, so cute! Looking for somewhere cool to go? <laughs>